Have you ever read in scripture about unleavened bread? Have you ever wondered, could you make it yourself? Well, I'm Annette Reeder, the Biblical Nutritionist, and I want to teach you how this simple to make, quick to enjoy bread can definitely be enjoyed on your dinner table tonight. Scripture teaches us all throughout the scripture about different foods. And it's almost like every story has a food element. Well, what I wanna do is teach you that when we enjoy these food elements, not just by reading about them, but by enjoying them, by cooking them and preparing them for your family and serving them, we get to re-emphasize God's love in the foods that he's given us. Okay, so let's look at unleavened bread. First of all, I'm a net reader, the biblical nutritionist, and I'm on mission to help you understand the foods in God's word and how they relate to us, not only nutritionally, but spiritually. And welcome to my kitchen. I hope you've been enjoying a lot of these cooking videos and just biblical understanding of food. Okay, so let's get started. So we're gonna make the unleavened bread. I'm using the recipe out of my Healthy Treasures cookbook. And you can get this cookbook any, on any of the online resources that are out there. It's everywhere. Now I've already kind of started making my bread. I've put in the two cups of flour. I've put in the salt. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the onions. So these are minced onions and I've also combined with it minced garlic. And I've already put in the two tablespoons of olive oil. Okay, to this we're going to go ahead and add our three-fourths a cup of water. And we're going to mix this up. And while I'm stirring this up, I want to share with you something else. And that is the flour that I'm using today. I'm actually using a sifted flour. Have you ever wanted your freshly milled breads to be just a little bit lighter, not so dense? You know, when we mill our own wheat, we have a lot of bran, which is nutritionally good in our breads and sometimes they become a heavier bread than what you would buy at the grocery store. So when you do use a sifted bread, a sifted flour, sometimes it can require more flour than what the recipe calls for because you don't have the bran. Okay, so I've got this mixed up. <clears throat> so I'm going to put this on the counter here and I'm going to knead it because it's a little bit sticky still. So you might see that we're gonna pick up a little bit of flour because it still has a stickiness to it. And what I wanna do is just knead it for a couple minutes. And while I'm doing this, I wanna share something else. You can make this unleavened bread any flavor you want. So I've added onions and garlic, so it's gonna be more of a savory bread, but you could omit the onions. You could omit the garlic, and you could actually turn it into a sweet bread by adding just a little bit of sucanat or honey and some cinnamon. Oh boy, wouldn't that be good. You could have your unleavened bread as more of a dessert treat. The point is, when scripture teaches us about different foods, God's trying to teach us different lessons. And unleavened bread, remember, is about removing the sin. Leavening stands for sin in some of the scriptures. And so as we remove the sin from our life, we can have better fellowship with him. But remember, he's the only one who can truly take away our sin. And he did that on the cross. And he did it during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So enjoying this treat with your family helps them to understand what God's message is. So here you can see we have a beautiful loaf of dough. Now I'm just going to cut it into fourths. And if you don't have one of these dough scrapers, these are my one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. So I've cut it into fourths. Now I'm gonna cut each one of those pieces in half again. So I'm gonna end up with eight pieces. Now the liquid that I used is some cold water, but it is just a liquid, obviously. But you could use milk, you could use juice, be careful of the sugar, and you can even use a broth, maybe a chicken broth or a beef broth or a vegetable broth would actually be very good as well. Okay, so now I'm just gonna roll this out. Now when I used to make these in the beginning, I rolled them out fairly flat, but I realize now, <clears throat> excuse me, I like them a little bit better, thicker. So here you can kind of see how thick that is. I'm gonna put it on our tray. <clears throat> in your recipes, you're gonna see a second unleavened bread. And as I, I am gonna post these recipes down below, even if you don't have the cookbook, that way you can enjoy it. There's also an unleavened bread where you pat it into a nine by 13 pan. And that recipe has uh, uh, just a little bit different ratio of the ingredients. And it's also a really good one too, because you can make mozzarella sticks with it and a lot of several other different recipes, make it into a pizza crust, all kinds of things like that. 
So be sure and try both the recipes, see which one you like better. Now this flour that I've used is a sifted flour. I use this Bosch uh, flour sifter here. So my flour here is going to be a little bit lighter than regular, regularly just freshly milled you know, whole wheat flour. I am using the hard red berries. Um, sometimes I'll use spelt, sometimes I'll use kamut, sometimes I will mix my grains. It just, you know, it just all depends what I feel like using for the time. Now you could even shape these into different shapes that might be interesting for your family. And we just roll them all out. And this little rolling pin is another one of my favorite tools. I like the smallness of it. This end here is small enough that you're going up into your pastry crust. It works really well. When I first got married, I had the, the large round rolling pin that was marble. I mean, it was beautiful. It made a great decoration, but I rarely ever used it. So I used this one a lot more, and I think I probably sold that one in a garage sale. All right, so I'm going to just roll these out. And then I'm going to do, we're going to prick let me just put this right here. We're going to prick these with a fork. Now, as far as baking goes, it keeps the bread from puffing up. But as far as the story goes, these remind us of the stripes that were placed on Jesus' back. And this is all part of teaching your children and your grandchildren about the elements of the story and how every element in the story paints a picture of everything Christ has done for us. And if you can have your children or your grandchildren make these unleavened bread, you can call them biscuits or just bread, with you, they will understand even more why Jesus is dying on the cross was so important for us. Okay, so here we have these. We're going to bake these in the oven for about 10 minutes at 450, and they're going to taste amazing. On top of this, there's lots of different toppings you can do, but I already did a video on that, so watch that video to see how you can enjoy these even more. Now, I just did a fresh batch, and I have two different sides here. This side was made with the sifted flour, and this side was made without the sifted flour, and then I made a little dip to go in the middle. So you can kind of see these are a lot lighter than this here, but they're both gonna taste amazing. And here's the point. When we read about food in scripture, we need to then think to ourselves, can we create that same food today? And if we can, how can we get our children and our grandchildren involved? Because as they see it, taste it, feel it, all of these, hear it, God's word come to life, they will remember God's promises. They will remember that Jesus is the unleavened bread, that this unleavened bread was to teach the Israelites that they needed to get rid of their sin, and only the coming Messiah was going to be able to do that officially. So this is about the unleavened bread. I just really hope that you, you try these recipes, you do them for yourself, enjoy it, but please leave comments down below. I wanna hear how it went with your family. How did they enjoy making it? Add some pictures, put it on our Facebook page, the Biblical Nutritionist Facebook page. Show us pictures of your family making unleavened bread. I'm Annette Reader, the Biblical Nutritionist. Please give us some thumbs up if you like this video. Give us some comments on other topics you'd like us to cover. And be sure and share this with your women's group, your Bible study group, and let them know that God's word tastes, is, tastes as well as it reads. Okay? Thank you for joining me.